We've been traveling officially for one year and one week as of today, September 9th. Because it's been our one year travel anniversary, I've been doing a lot of reflecting about everything I've learned in the past year, how far we've come, and also how much things have changed since when we first started traveling up until now. I also feel like for the first time I've really gotten in touch with and been able to articulate why I want to make videos in the first place. I've always felt this urge to make videos, but I guess it's taken me a long time to figure out what exactly I want to make videos about. I've been in videos with Wyatt reacting to metal, I've made videos about sewing, and now we make videos about traveling. But what I really want to do, the whole reason that I feel inspired to make videos is because I want to share my life. I want to share my life with others. And the reason I want to share my life is because other people who I watch online who share their lives with me, inspire me and inspire me to do things that I wouldn't normally do. But the thing is, especially as of late, our videos aren't really sharing our lives. Our videos are about the big adventures with a ton of fancy editing and the best possible production value that we can muster. And it's not really about sharing our personal selves. And in fact, most of our life is what happens in between those big adventures. 95% of our time is in between what you see on the channel. And so this video is about me sharing the in-between with you guys. Where we're staying right now, there's a beautiful little lake that we can jump into. It's a great way to start the day or even take a break in the afternoon, as honestly the water is quite cold right now. That's cold! <laughs> I really like jumping into cold water, and sometimes I even take cold showers. The reason is that it really calms my mind and brings me into the present moment. Sometimes I feel like there are so many thoughts swirling around in my head all at once, but as soon as I feel that shock of cold water, they evaporate and all I'm left with is what's really happening. I'm really grateful to have this dock and this lake right here, not just to be able to jump into cold water, but also for the beauty of it. When we first left Canada 12 months ago, we were staying in Airbnbs for a month at a time. Somewhere along the way, around March, February, I realized that if we continued to do that and continued to spend the amount of money that we were spending, we were going to run out of money. So I decided that if our income didn't come up to cover everything that we were spending each month by the 1st of July, I was going to try to get a job online. Of course, this isn't something that I actually want to do, but I felt like I had no other options. That was until the last week of June. We did a hike in the Rila Mountains of Bulgaria, and during that hike, we spent a night at an incredible mountain hut. There, we met two other Canadians who had been traveling on and off for years. But unlike us, they were doing it for almost no money at all. They gave us the solution I had been looking for, just in the nick of time. And it's a website called Workaway. The idea is super simple. You stay with a local anywhere in the world that you'd like to travel. You work for them, usually around five hours a day. And in exchange, they provide food and board. What I thought was the solution to being able to continue to travel was not the only way. We didn't necessarily, <laughs> mosquitoes. <laughs> we didn't necessarily need to make more money. We could just spend less money. So fast forward to today and we are on our third work away in the countryside in Sweden. And this work away has been our best experience yet. So let's start with the actual work that we've been doing, my favorite of which is planting trees. Behind the barn was a forest of mostly spruce trees, but an invasion of bark beetles caused all of the trees in this area to die. So we are planting new trees. It's a big job and one that we've been slowly chipping away at. We start by clearing an area of weeds. Then we dig a hole for the new tree. The baby trees come from elsewhere on the property. We take them if they are in a spot that's too close to another tree. Next, we add fresh soil to the hole and set the tree into its new home. Once it's firmly in place, we can add some bark around it to keep in moisture and discourage weeds. Finally, it gets watered with two full buckets of water. 
We also give the tree a little bow tie so it's easy to keep track of all the ones we've planted. The time spent planting these trees has taught me something very valuable. Because this is something I've never done before, I have no expectation of what results I will get when I'm done each day. I don't know whether having planted three trees is a lot or a little. Instead, I am entirely focused on the act of doing it, not the outcome. This is a new mindset for me and something that I've come to realize I can and should apply to everything. Sometimes Wyatt and I sit down to edit a video together and I'm so focused on the results, on getting X amount of minutes of video completed, that I end up stressed and not enjoying myself. And that leaves absolutely no space for creativity to flow. I'm working now on slowing down and enjoying doing whatever the tasks are that I have each day. Whether it be editing a video, planting trees, cleaning, or even weeding. A task that is easy to want to race through and be done with. But the quiet hours spent weeding and tending to the gardens here have left me with a lot of time and space to think. A garden is a beautiful metaphor for the mind. You will always reap what you sow, so be mindful of what seeds you plant. Love, gratitude, and empowering thoughts are like the berries or flowers. Fear and doubt are the weeds. The more energy something has behind it, the more powerful it becomes. So it's important to put in the work pruning away whatever doesn't serve you or your garden. When I let the fear and the doubt go, I can feel that we're being guided and all I need to do is keep following this path. Sometimes I wonder like, where should we go next? And then within a day, a friend calls us up and says, you're needed in Slovenia, you need to go there. And I get my answers and I get what it is we're meant to do next. So I have faith that I'm being guided and I'm going to end up where I need to go. Cooking is one of my greatest passions and I'm so grateful to be able to do it here. There's something really special about making a dish with ingredients that you harvested just minutes prior. It honestly makes me want to grow our own food one day. So far, we've made plenty of vegan meals, like these fresh salads, cookies, which of course were a hit and barely lasted a day, tried our hand at bread making. <gasps> oh, it looks really nice. Oh, yeah, it looks Look. great. I think that works. It's okay. Yeah? Yeah, it's just really dense. <laughs> what do you think? It's good. Mm. <laughs> good. <laughs> and even made lingonberry jam out of lingonberries we harvested ourselves in the forest. Lingonberry jam, baby. Lingonberry. Serving it with lentil balls and potatoes is definitely the most Swedish thing we've done yet. Better than Ikea? Better than, better than Ikea. Ikea. Perfect. <laughs> the best way I know to show my love and appreciation is through cooking. It's what I would always do for our friends at home. And being here has given me the opportunity to get to share that with others once again. When we first started on this journey, I definitely had a vision in my mind of what travel was going to look like for us, what it should look like. I planned so many things months in advance. Where we were going, how we'd get there, what activities we'd do and make videos about. I thought I needed to be in control of so many factors. But at this point, I've come to realize that there's beauty in just letting go. The truth is that there are so many things I don't know now that I will know in a week, or a month, or a year. I never could have guessed that we'd end up in the Swedish countryside, enjoying living in a little cabin, planting trees, and making new friends. But I'm so glad that we are. There is no methodology to this, no right way to travel, especially not when you have no end date. I've spent a lot of time thinking about what my one biggest lesson from this year of travel would be, if I could distill it down into one thought, one idea. And the lesson is this, there are good, in kind people everywhere, and at the end of the day, we're all the same. It doesn't matter what language someone speaks, how much financial wealth they have, everybody everywhere is living a life as 
vivid and deep and intricate as your own. Everybody has friends and family that they care about. Everybody has dreams, desires, fears, insecurities. Travel has opened my eyes to the fact that our differences are really so small. And even places in the world that have reputations for being dangerous or scary are still just filled with good, hardworking, kind people who are doing their best. The world is such a great, interesting place. And my biggest wish, my biggest intention with these videos is to inspire you guys to get out there and see it for yourselves.